Hello to everybody from Witherspoon. Wish you were here. In lieu of that, we'll do another short e-seminar for the day. If you recall, in the fall, we did a seminar on loneliness, which, if the statistics are true, is all but endemic in the country. And of course, for many people, just now under quarantine or lockdown, the experience of loneliness may be exacerbated, uh, made worse. Some of you have had your plans put on hold, your friendships put on hold, or at least the immediacy of those friendships put on hold. And loneliness is a real challenge at the moment. But loneliness can, in part, be redeemed by solitude. And solitude is difficult for those who are lonely because they can be so caught up with their feeling of loneliness that they are unable to or unwilling to re-engage and recollect themselves in solitude and silence. And for those who are surrounded by others, surrounded by busyness and friends and family, perhaps locked into a family, I'm finding solitude difficult just now. Solitude itself can be a hard one thing, uh, but is certainly something you ought to be pursuing and considering. It's very easy for many of us just now to be disengaged, disintegrated, and fractured in our attentions, worried about now this and now that, perhaps the future, employment, grades, classes, and so on, the pandemic itself. And solitude is something of a corrective. So a few texts for you. First from Montaigne. If you haven't read Montaigne, you really should. He's great. We are never at home, he says. We are always beyond. Fear, desire, hope project us toward the future and steal us from the consideration of what is. A soul anxious about the future is the most vulnerable. He who would do his job, the reference here is to Plato, to the justice of doing one's job. He who would do one's job would see that the first lesson is to cultivate himself before anything else. He refuses useless thoughts and projects. Philo of Alexandria is a great text too, I love this one. Every person who is in training for wisdom avoids the company of busybodies and holds in contempt the places where they spend their time, courts, councils, marketplaces, assemblies, com boxes. In short, every kind of meeting or reunion of thoughtless people, they, the wise, who find their joy in virtue, celebrate a festival their whole life long. There would, never, there would never be a single moment in which they would not lead a life full of joyful laughter. Indeed, the whole cycle of the year would be a festival for them. Pierre Hadot, in his gloss on this, suggests that solitude or the care of the soul through spiritual exercises is the way to attain this kind of lifelong festi festival. Here's what Hado suggests, and it's what I would suggest as well. Take flight every day. For at least a moment, which may be as brief as it is intense, a spiritual exercise every day. This work on yourself is essential. This, this ambition justified. Well, how to have such solitude? Prayer, of course, contemplation, real and deep reading of good texts. And I would suggest memento mori, the remembrance of death. Nothing will bring solitude to mind, and nothing will create or allow us to remember a genuine scale of values, what really matters as much as the remembrance of death. That will allow us to recollect ourselves, to represent ourselves, and to represent values as they ought to, ought to be. I do want to add this, though. This sense of ambition that Hado talks about, this ambition for oneself, the care of oneself, is not a collapse into self. It's not an endless introspection. And its purpose in the end is not merely for the betterment of the self. I'd suggest that it is to create a sort of self which is thus able to be given and to have a self to give. We want to give much, and we want to have much to give. We want to have something worthwhile to give to others. I happen to think that the best life is the life of self-gift. But if I want to give well, I have to have something well to give. Let me close with some poetry from Wendell Berry on this point. Uh, it's in the context of marriage in the poetry, but it could relate to many forms of friendship as well. Here's what Berry says. It's talking about the unexpected generosity of gift. The moral life doesn't diminish, but it increases ourself when we give away. So remember the Sabbath poems. 
Loving you has taught me the infinite longing of the self to be given away and the great difficulty of that entire giving. For in love to give is to receive, and then there is yet more to give. It's virtually impossible to give yourself away because there's always more to give and the self is established and re-established by the gift. Our best wishes to you all. Uh, many of you will be preparing for religious celebrations, and we hope you have a wonderful time with your families. For those of you preparing for Passover, um, this exile to who shall pass next year, Jerusalem. For those of you preparing for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter, remember that death has lost its sting. Of what should you be afraid? Best to all.